Perspective can seem incredibly complicated and something that we're never going to understand properly. But in this video, I'm going to give you an easier way to think about it, to understand it, and I hope to draw with it. We can forget that the word perspective is just a common word used to describe the way the appearance of an object, in this case a building, changes as our position changes in viewing it. If we look at this line here, as we approach it from further along the Seine River, we can see it's at that angle. And by the time we get to this position, more in front of it, we can actually see that the angle has changed. Perspective and perspective theory is just a way of understanding the pattern where these lines change. And therefore observing more accurately, it will help us to draw it more accurately as well. We're now going to look at understanding one point perspective. The most important thing about how things appear is the level of our eyes, the eye level. This is sometimes called the horizon. So eye level, that's the level of my eyes as I'm viewing the scene. With one point perspective, we basically stand in front of an object and look at it. And depending exactly on where the angle we're looking at it is, there are sight lines. And these sight lines take us, if we continue them, to a point where they all join together. And that's called the vanishing point, and that's always on the eye level line. But we'll we'll make it a bit we'll make it a bit shorter. We'll just put an end to it there. But the important thing is to recognize that we can actually see our object three-dimensionally, even though in real life we would actually only see this face and this side here. That in fact the perspective is working on the parts that we can't see. How does this look in real life? So we're looking here at a street scene in Vienna. The first thing is to find eye level. It's a horizontal line. It's where all the truly horizontal lines will sit. We can see that with these very helpful lines across the front of the buildings, that they become horizontal about there. Above that, the lines get steeper and steeper in angle, and below that, they get steeper in angle, but in the other direction. But here we have a straight line. So that's our eye level. The next thing to do then is just to look to see where the various lines line up. And if we go to this roof line, we can see that it, and we pop a line on just to see how it looks, we get that angle there. If we look at this spot here, we line it up with that line, we can see, in fact, that these lines do meet up, the vanishing point does meet up on eye level. So we can see that this is how it works in real life. Any element on the building that when viewed horizontally, such as here and here is at the same level, it will line up on the same perspective line. So on this side, where we've got these two little balls on top of the two towers, again, if we line up those, we can see that the perspective line also goes to the vanishing point. So we're not just talking about walls, but we're talking about all the architectural elements that are on a wall at the same level all line up with this vanishing point. There is only one vanishing point on this because going the other direction, the lines come across horizontally because we're far away enough that it pretty much looks like we're seeing it front on. There is one point perspective here, there is one vanishing point. But what if I stood directly in front of the square so I didn't see any side view? Would there still be any perspective there? We will put in our eye level. We will draw our square, or our box, it's a box really. What actually happens here, if I'm standing directly in the middle of this square, is there is still a vanishing point. It's right in front of me on the eye level. And if I were to draw perspective lines, they would be like that. And if we were to draw the back wall of our building or our object in, it would be like that. And so here would be the side wall that we saw here. 
only that's the outside of the wall and this is the inside of the wall that we'd be looking at. Does this happen in real life? It certainly does and it's an important fact to realise. Here is part of a colonnade around the museum precinct in Berlin. Where is eye level? Well, eye level in this case, because I'm on the same level as all the people, eye level actually lines up with where everyone's heads are. If we were to look at the perspective lines, if we were to follow the lines, um, say on this side, and then we were to look at the lines on the other side of the colonnade, we can see in fact that they cross as they should on the vanishing point. If we were to look at the lines below, they also do as well. So we can see one point perspective works even if the one vanishing point is hidden behind the actual structure that we're looking at. One very common way we see one point perspective thought about is if we have a street and if we have buildings on the street and if we stand in the middle of the street and look up the street so our vanishing point is in front of us and the perspective lines all go to there and then the buildings go down the street something such as this. In the centre we can see our roadway. So this is also one point perspective. So where do we see this? Well we see this most commonly in streets. Here is the Unter den Linden in Berlin. Eye level is about here. If we look at the perspective line of the top of this building on the left and then we look at the perspective line on say this, this building on the right we can see that they line up. Street lines all go there and the other lines from the other buildings go there as well. Now the, the buildings at the very end of this street they're on sort of a cross street that's why they don't line up but the buildings that actually front this street follow this this one point perspective nicely and I know that if that's the top line and this is the bottom line then all of the lines in between the angle has to keep getting larger. There is one more example of one point perspective we'll look at and that's when our eye level is very high and so our object is completely underneath it. So and we need our vanishing point which we'll make here for this demonstration. Our sight lines approximately going back to the right place and we've made our structure very long and here is the side that we're shading in just for a point of reference and we can see in fact that we're looking down on top of the object but that all the principles are the same because the eye level is above the object the perspective lines are only in one direction. So how does this look in real life? I was on an upper floor of the Louvre Museum in Paris taking a photo. Therefore eye levels high so eye level is the point level with my eyes and then if we look at the angles below it and we'll take a middle angle perspective angle and we can see yep it lines up as we expect on that perspective line. Now it's not just on that on that church but it's also all of our perspective lines from this same plane all end up in that place. We can make it very messy with lines but yep. Now once we go above, above the eye level there, then the, the angle will start to come down. As we can see it, if we take the roof line of this church, we can see that it's coming down to the same vanishing point, but in the opposite direction. This is barely one point perspective, simply because we're not really front on enough. There's a bit much of an angle here, and we can see that in fact, there are some 
some minor perspective lines going off to the left. So that, that means that this is starting to become a two-point perspective example, but I don't need to use it for that. Hi, I'm Stephen Travers. Perspective shouldn't be something we get uptight about. It's really a way of describing what we're seeing, but if we understand how it works, it, it's a tool we can use to help us see how the building or the objects are looking from the position we're looking at them from. And that helps us observe more accurately, which helps us draw more accurately. So it's a worthwhile thing to persevere with. If you found this helpful, I'm gonna be repeating the process now with two and three point perspectives. So you've got those to look forward to. But of course, whatever you're doing with drawing, have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.